So we're here today, um, I'm talking with a patient, Jennifer, uh, who's kind enough to explain her pro pain problems she has and when it began. So Jen, why don't you tell us a little bit about where your pain is and when it began. Um, it started about 2010. It started um, in the back of my head, goes up to the head, down across my shoulder, down into my left arm. And was this a result of an accident that you had? Yeah. Okay. And um, have you been seen by a lot of specialists for this condition prior to coming to our office? Yes, absolutely. I've seen, uh, how, uh, uh, let's see, it started with a pain management doctor, to physical therapy, to uh, another uh, doctor who sent me for um, the physical type of physical therapy. Okay, and so basically you've had a lot of treatments for this thus far. A lot of injections and a lot of treatments and nothing has really worked, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so at this point you're interested in pursuing what's called a spinal cord stimulator trial, correct? Yes. Okay, yes. great. Okay, so we're here today. We're going to be doing a spinal cord stimulator trial for this patient. Uh, the patient has intractable left C6 cervical radiculopathy and has failed other conservative treatments. And so today, we're going to show you how to do a spinal cord stimulator trial. What I have in front of me is a Medtronic uh, compact lead, eight contact lead, which we'll be placing uh, in the cervical uh, region, probably around C6 cervical vertebrae. And we'll be showing that to you, as well as the fluoroscopic images that uh, confirm that, okay? Okay, so I've placed the coup de needle into the dorsal aspect of the spine where we're just about entering the epidural space. And the way that we can determine when we've entered the epidural space is with a technique called loss of resistance. In this case, we use air with a special syringe called loss of resistance pulsator syringe. We gently advance the needle, and once we enter the epidural space, the surgeon can feel a palpable loss of resistance to injection, and again, in this case, air. a lot of resistance here because I'm on what's called ligamentum flavum, but then as I gently advance it, I'll feel a loss of So I've advanced the needle approximately three millimeters and I've, entered, I've encountered a loss of resistance, and so now, as you can see, it's extremely easy to inject air, indicating correct placement of the needle. And it's at this point that once I know that the needle's correctly placed, I'll gently try to slide this contact, uh, this spinal cord stimulator lead, rostrally up to the cervical area, being that I'm at T2-3 now, which is almost between the shoulder blades, I'm going to try to advance the lead all the way up to C3, which is almost towards the base of the skull. And I'll advance that gently, looking at the x-ray machine. So at this point, what I've done is place this spinal cord stimulator lead rostrally to approximately the C3 segment, and you can see on the fluoroscopy, the eight contacts, and just off to the left side. So then what we'll do now is hook up this lead to an extension cable and hand it over to the vendor, the vice vendor, who will then turn it on and ask the patient where they feel paresthesia. When you feel that tingling we talked about, okay? Where and when? We're going to real slow at first. <clears throat> So, Jen, you're, you know, and ensure that the lead has not moved at all. If you compare the image on the left to the image on the right, pretty much identical. And then we carefully remove the stylet from the electrode as well as the needle. Take the lead into position and send the patient home for approximately three days to do an outpatient trial. At that point, we'll remove the lead and determine whether to implant a more permanent spinal cord stimulator device.
Okay, so we're back now talking with Jennifer who has had a trial of the spinal cord stimulator which you just saw earlier in the video and she's here to have the lead removed and Jen thank you once again for allowing us to videotape your procedure you had um, did you find that the therapy was effective uh, in reducing your pain absolutely great great and does that sound like something that is the first time you've really had relief of this yes is, is this a therapy that you're interested in pursuing and getting a permanent implant absolutely okay great well at this point what we're going to do is remove this spinal cord stimulator lead from Jen's neck and we'll go ahead and schedule her for a permanent implant okay awesome. okay so we're here to remove the spinal cord stimulator trial lead and so basically you can see this is the end of the lead that was connected to the extension cable, which the patient brought home and trialed at home. And the end of this lead is under the skin all the way up to the C2 or C3 area. And so Jen, this is gonna be a little bit of pressure, but it shouldn't be too bad. You're just gonna feel a little bit of pressure, okay? Deep breath now, okay? Pressure, pressure, pressure. Oh, you're so tough, and that's it. It's out, and I don't know if you can see, but that's the lead with all eight contacts and the tips intact. So we'll just put a band-aid right on here and the patient can go home and we'll go ahead and schedule the implant.